You are about to listen to an exclusive interview here on Maximum Threshold Radio at MaximumThreshold.net. Maximum Threshold, you're on the air. Hey, Dom. Yeah. Mark Scott from Trish. How you doing, baby? Great, man. What's going on, man? What's the haps? Well, hey, I got I was told to give you a call, so nice. I'm calling. Sweet. Yeah, we're playing Drag Me Down right now. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> God bless you, bud. Oh, man, I love your new stuff. So, <laughs> hold on. Dom's having oh. a... He needs a hiney lick there. Yes. Hey, yes. right up. I'm going to ask. Are you guys almost done with high school finally? <laughs> what? <laughs> done with high school? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when you guys first were on MTV, it was like, oh, these guys are still in high school or just got out or whatever. And it turns out they're all in their 20s and shit. <laughs> it was like if Saved by the Bell had a band... <laughs> you guys never lost your age. <laughs> so what else is going on, man? I, well, I'm having some fun. Well, who did I run into? Was that Dave that I ran into yesterday? Yeah. 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 But we had some fun. It was a lot, a lot, a lot. It was a hoot. great old time we had. Yeah, he said but, it was a cool uh, show. He told me to give a jingle in, so I wanted to call and see what's going on. Nice. Yeah, we've been playing your music for a long time, man. Oh, shit. God bless you, buddy. You know we appreciate it. It's much and, appreciated. And my da- I took my daughter. Her first concert was Trickster. When you played Cleveland with Danger Danger and um, I think it was L.A. Guns. Oh, well, 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 well. That was the uh, Time Warner Amphitheater thing. Yep, that's it. it was, I remember. That wasn't too long ago. No. That was, uh, you know, I had pictures from that night, but they're classified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was her first show. She just turned two. It was, it was oh, what? Friend. Are you serious? You took a two-year-old to the That's show? Right, and she got a. She you got, are hysterical. <laughs> she, I don't even believe you. She got Isn't that just a long term state? Oh, she, not this state. You no. could you could bang your sister here if you want, <laughs> <laughs> and it happens. And we got Michael here. It's kind of like a, in some states, it's a parental requirement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your first threesome has to be with your sister and your mother. Or your brother and your oh, father. Man. <laughs> Is it that kind of show? All right, now now we're getting to the nitty gritty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can say anything you want on here. It we makes just, it makes it more fun. We just played party all the time from Eddie Murphy. Anything goes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that special they had on him? That was pretty damn funny. Yes, that was hilarious, actually. I like he is the king. He is the king, dude. When Tracy Morgan came out in that red leather jacket and, <laughs> and pants, that was hilarious. I'm only going to show he got you. Bald. I'm only going to show were, two they were hanging stretch on marks. The ground, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm only going to show two stretch marks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was funny. So, like, how many how many shows are you guys going to be doing with kicks? Is it just? A one-off, or you guys on the road? You know, you know what's really, what's really strange. Even before we got signed back in the day, we mm-hmm. used to open for kicks at, in the clubs mm-hmm. uh, around Jersey. So uh, we've known these guys for a hell of a long time. And to be honest with you, sometimes we ju- right now we don't have a lot planned. Yeah. But it, over the course of I don't know how many years, we've opened for kicks for maybe ten times, yeah. and it just keeps popping up out of nowhere we for some reason we we just have this affair going on really weird but over the next couple of years we're probably going to open up for a few more times too but as of now mm-hmm. we have none scheduled oh, wow. it just it, it, i think throughout the industry there's a lot of guys we just tend to gravitate towards these guys are real sweet guys they're, they're really good people and we have a lot of fun they're great guys and i think trickster and kicks actually have an interesting uh you know we we, we tend to it t- tends to be a nice package uh, we're going to be playing with them again at what looks like the M3 Festival in May, mm-hmm. uh, a Saturday. The, there's a, it's a Friday Saturday thing. Uh, it's uh, Merriweather Post Pavilion in May. Uh, big show. Uh, Kicks is uh, that, that's in Maryland, and that's Kicks' home turf. We were there with them once before a couple of years ago. We're going to be with them again in May. Nice. But otherwise, right now we really don't have anything else on the board together. But I just know over the next uh, year at least we're going to open up for a few times. Okay, so. In those last couple of sentences, you said you've always gravitated towards men and packages. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you did too. Things it's okay. in my whatnot. I'm not judging. <laughs> it's all right. It just, I think for some reason we just it just tends to work out that way. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> so you? Are I you, did not say we gravitate towards I men. No, we're joking. <laughs> you said you gravitated towards certain men. It's open, a, open hole and stick it in, my friend. So just calm down. 
We'll take it step by step. All right. Let's Easy do, on your threshold. Does this sm- <laughs> does this smell like chloroform? <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Line. Like Colt forty five. <laughs> So growing up, you're, you from being from Jersey, are you guys uh, in with Eddie Trunk and stuff like that? Hell yeah. Well, to be honest, we even knew Eddie when he was back at WDHA, uh, like before he crossed that next line into where he had didn't become a superstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've known Eddie for 20-some-odd years. Uh, he's always supported Trickster, God bless him. Uh, he was always a very good person. He, we were always welcomed on his radio shows. And then when he was at Q104.3, which he still does a show on there, we go and see him there. And bottom line, when he comes out for a drink, we're buying. So, so. <laughs> yeah, we've done. He does a lot of things, too, where he hosts shows. He goes out live like he hosted Rock, Oklahoma. He was yeah. kind enough to get us on the bill there. And he's been a good friend over the years. And uh, uh, I, I, I think... Maybe Trickster Music is his most favorite, but he does. He is a fan of the band, and we are very uh, proud to say that, and we love him. And uh, he's been a good man, a good supporting uh, friend over the years. And I think he, he doesn't just do it because he's friends. I, I think he does actually like our music. So, um, you know, I'm honored. Truly honored. Good man. So, good man. So then two questions. And a good friend. One, did you have to pay for I'm his book? It. I have two questions. Did you have to pay for Eddie no. Trunk's book? And how come he doesn't have you on that metal show? <laughs> Maybe if you... Number one, I, I'm proud to pay for Eddie's book, number one. Uh, and, you know, as a friend, I, I, I'm honored to support him. What was part two? Part two is, why aren't, haven't you been on that metal show? And if, if you need to, maybe you guys should cover a UFO song and he'll put you on there. Let me tell you something. That's a very interesting idea. But uh, maybe we just didn't find the right song as of yet. Uh, you know what? I don't, we haven't even asked them that because, you know, what? if if one day it comes up that we're going to be on the show, then God bless. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's all good, you know, and uh, we don't have to. We're friends also don't put the other friend in a position where they feel they have to be pressured to do something. And you know what? That's all cool. Mm-hmm. And he's, again, been very good to us. We love him. Uh, we have a hell of a lot of fun together, and I think there's a lot of people in the industry that don't necessarily treat him as a friend. They treat him uh, strategically to get what they want, yeah. and we don't do that, man. You know, I think also when Eddie's with us and we go out drinking, he knows it ain't some kind of ploy. He knows the real deal. <laughs> We've been face down on the floor 4 a.m. and God knows where in America having a great old time. And that's the true value of a friend. And he, he knows it. You know, he knows it. It's all good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if whatever you're going to be on a metal show, then fine. If not, that's fine, too. It's all good. I love him, man. He's a good man. So he's a, he's, a part of, he's a part of our inner family. That's cool. So back in, back in the day when, there were, when the groupies were still hot, <laughs> did, you, uh, did a groupie Dude, ever... Who, wait, wait, hold on a second. What makes you think they're still not hot? Well, most of them, <laughs> we're all about the same age, yeah. and most of them, their the nipples are pointing downward. You know, there's still some. some, there's, some still, not all. there's still some hot ones. Some of their boxes look like old catcher's mitts. But, but <laughs> has has a has a group <laughs> has a groupie ever said, "Give it to me, good"? Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. Just, because most of my, as a matter of fact, while while we're giving it to them, good, they actually request for more. <laughs> so uh, it's encore. Most, it's, it's all good, but yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, it happened just a few nights ago. Most of the groupies I've encountered are like, when they wake up, they're like, "Get off of me! Who the hell the fuck did I get here?" <laughs> <laughs> well, in the dark, if you say hi, I'm Peter Lauren, <laughs> and they go, "Oh yes, give it to me, good," and they turn on the light and see that it's Dominic, you know, they, I can understand that being a problem. <laughs> You <laughs> might get a reaction like that from time to time. Next yeah. time, just say you're Mark Scott. You'll fly right through. <laughs> definitely do that. <laughs> well, we'll say we're Eddie Trunk. <laughs> Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> so horrible, man. Oh, I'm not terrible. listening to those comments. <laughs> Don't worry, Eddie doesn't listen to our show either. <laughs> yeah, him and two, him and six point six billion hey, let other me, people. Let me, let on me the tell planet. you something. I've seen. Some hot freaking tricks yeah. uh, come on to Chunk, uh, Trunk. 
Like, I kid you not. And he looks at me like, oh, my God. You know, I look at him and I go, I'm not looking. It's really, you know what? When you get famous and whatnot and that sort of thing happens, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But by the same token, I think, you know, uh, at this stage of the game, everybody's got it in check as to what reality is versus the illusion of the business and all that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, hey, you know, when you get the attention of, of a, I'm an attractive woman, if, if, if that's something, it's kind of cool, but, you know, I think that people with character keep it all in stride. i got a question here from, from um, who's this from? Old school headbanger. He's saying when you were out drinking with Eddie Trunk, do you ever take his shirt off and swing it around over his head like a helicopter? That <laughs> <laughs> <As> happened. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on, guys. Give me some good ones. Okay. Give me some good ones. Has, have you ever performed a Blumpkin on Eddie Trunk? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only once, but uh, the photos were uh, destroyed. Have you ever jerked off a tranny? <laughs> pre-op. Um, pre-op. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, well, let's get serious for one minute. Where can we find Tricksters? Only one minute, please. we got to get back to the good question. All right, we're, we're, at, we're at 58 <laughs> seconds. Where can we find Trickster music and all the news and tour dates of Trickster? Uh, best center for Trickster is on our website, TricksterRocks.com. We've got all the merch. We've got the CDs. We've got all the good stuff there. And bottom line, really, just the tour stuff is probably the most important thing. Uh, find out where we're playing, TricksterRocks.com. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. Like us there as well. We keep it pretty well updated. But, again, the websites are certainly the best. I got a question here. This is coming from Jeff Kiss in our chat room. He's asking, Steve Brown does all these Van Halen tribute band cover things. Do you do anything else on the side? Do I, absolutely. Funny you mentioned uh, a very good friend of mine just actually recently asked me to play with him. It's 18-time Grammy Award winner, Mr. Jimmy Stir. Jimmy Stir is the king of polka, believe it or not. Okay. And uh, he has a uh, world record amount of Grammy nominations, 18 actual Grammys that he won. And I will be playing with him come January. Uh, Dennis Coyman, his drummer, who's an outstanding polka drummer, uh, is going in for carpal tunnel surgery. So Jimmy, my good friend, said, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a few shows with Trickster, but uh, overall I got some downtime. So I said, Jimmy, I'll back him up. And uh, I'm going to be Mr. Polka for a little while. Uh, and again, it's maybe not my uh, forte as far as stylistically playing. I like to slam the living crap out of things. But uh, I can be musical if I have to be. And my friend needs us a hand, and I'm going to be there for him. And uh, mm-hmm. that's going to be part of it. I also played with Bobby Masano. Uh, Bobby is well known in the blues world. He was always a first run uh, draft pick for the Grammys. And I backed him up on some blues stuff, a lot of live stuff. I also have a side project with Chris Caffrey of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Chris mm-hmm. is out right now with TSO. Yeah. Uh, I have a cover band. It's kind of like an all-star cover band thing. And uh, i got to tell you, Caffrey is a monster for oh, a yeah. player. I have a lot of fun with him. And uh, I play with myself on a regular basis, as a matter of fact. Did, you just, did that hurt your feet? All that name dropping? <laughs> 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 that was no, hurt your cock. <laughs> Watch out! It ain't where it ends; it's where it bends. Um, so, so you're in a so you do the polka. Are you Polish? No, I'm really not. And funny thing, neither is Jimmy Stir. He's actually Irish, but uh, where he comes from, Florida, New York, is uh, actually a big Polish community. Uh, and it, for some reason, he has cornered the market in that in that genre. He has a true love for that music and. Uh, it, it's more than just Polish people that listen to it. It's really a culture. It's really a, it's something special. He, he's got, he's got 113 albums. I mean, this guy is unfreaking believe he's made over 113 albums. Uh, he's got five gold records, I think. Uh, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, what a career that, that, you know, and I get to actually be a part of it for a little while and uh, I'm honored. It's, it's a true honor. I mean, it sounds funny and Polk can sometimes connotate a joke. But let me tell you something, man. Jimmy Stir is not a goddamn joke. So, and uh, playing with him is, is truly an honor. I'm honored to call him a friend. So nice. playing with him all this time, did he ever tell you exactly who stole the key? Unless, I don't choke on him so tight, right? <laughs> <laughs> I knew something was coming like that. <laughs> After playing with him all this time, did he say his balls were aching? No. <laughs> hi Uh-huh. No, did he ever tell you who, who stole the Kiska? 
<laughs> oh man, come on! <laughs> uh, all right, give me another one, Hippie. Come on. Okay, let me see. Let's see what we got here lined up. You want to know if you go to, if you go for what are you two doing in that room? You got some extra lotion or what? No. <laughs> it puts the lotion on the skin, or it gets yeah, that I polka know. again. <laughs> Put the fucking lotion in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> it puts the fucking lotion in the basket, bitch. <laughs> so have you ever have you it ever rubs the lotion on its skin, or it gets the hose again? So have <laughs> have you ever That's seen? What she said. Have you ever seen Eddie Trunk do the Silence of the Lambs wiener dance? <laughs> no. Please tell me what does it look like. Have you ever seen Peter Lorraine do it? Or Pete? Yes, that I have. I've performed it with him many a times. Now, if we could just get paid for that, we'll really be, uh, we'll have a new show in Vegas. I got a question here from Beavis. He's saying, ask if you go for Polish food in Garfield, New Jersey. Garfield, New Jersey. Wait a minute. Wait. I lived in Garfield for a while. Matter of fact, just after our, my first tour with Trickster back in '91, we wrapped it up. Uh, I got an apartment in Garfield with my good buddy Vicky, who is uh, head tech for uh, Whitney Houston. We split the apartment. When he was on the road, I was at home, and when I was on the road, he was at home. Nice. So it didn't make sense for us to pay for two apartments. We got one real nice joint, and we kind of owned it ourselves, but pay for together. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I was in Garfield. The big cuisine over in Garfield was Italian. There might be a, 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 a Polish clique, I guess, in Garfield, but the main thing was Italian. This is Jersey, pal. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, hu huge Italian food, Italian pork stores and things like that. Uh, Polish food? Mm, at least I, I didn't have a lot of familiarity with it. Maybe maybe some places with pierogies and whatnot, but the big thing was Italian in Garfield. You kidding me? Absolutely. They're they're asking um what street was that on, and what the address MacArthur. was. MacArthur, <laughs> <laughs> the apartment was on MacArthur Ave, and just a block over was Harrison. There was a lot of stuff going on there. Right off, people in Jersey they got they're familiar with Outwater Lane and that whole area. Garfield's very, uh, you know, people again from northern New Jersey, Bergen County. Mm -hmm. It's Italian, man. I mean, again, it might have some Polish clicks and whatnot. I was not really that familiar with it, but uh, some of the best goddamn Italian food on this planet. It's not in Italy. It's in Bergen County. Mm -hmm. So we we got a question for you about Don Dockin. Okay, cause, hit me. Because the rumor is that you've toured with Don Dockin. Were you a it was lot? Not even it is confirmed fact. Nineteen ninety, uh, okay. we turned with, toured with Don. We actually played with Dockin a lot. Okay. Right, Time Warner. Wait, not Time Warner. Not not there. Did we? No, he wasn't there. Yeah. But uh, we we have played with him a lot. Very recently, as a matter of fact. Go ahead, hit me. So, you know, are you like? Were you guys not allowed to look directly at his wig? And what does he look like without it on? <laughs> First off, it's not a wig. I will confirm. Yeah, bullshit. Not a wig. Bullshit. Great guy. You're a liar. Person. You're a liar. I'm, I'm going to come I'm, kick I'm, you I'm in the I'm balls, you liar. I'm serious. <laughs> he, <laughs> great story. We did, in 1992, we did this promotion where we took a whole bunch of DJs, rented a plane, put them on a plane, and it was part of the deal, like uh, thanking them for playing our first album, like get them an opportunity to listen to our second album and get it on the radio, that kind of thing. So we put them on this plane, fly, fly everybody to Cabo San Lucas. It's a one-off. We fly out, we were on tour Kiss. We got, ran away for one night to do this Cabo thing, flew a bunch of DJs out. We're playing at Cabo Wabo, Sammy Hagar's Cabo Wabo. I'm playing out in Van Halen's drum set. It was unbelievable. A dream come true, blah, blah, blah. We're playing, coming around around 1130 midnight. There's some tall freaking guy, glasses crooked on his face, comes to the front of the stage drunk. Oh, I love you guys, man. He looked down and like, yeah, it looks like Don Dockin. Guess what? Don Dockin, drunk, freaking ripped the whole nine yards. He stumbles onto the stage. We end up playing, breaking the chains together. in classic night, drinking all night with the man, the whole deal. It, it, not true. I mean, now, whether he's got some other thing going on, I don't know, but certainly not a wig. I will confirm that. Okay, so it could be, it could be plugs, not rugs. Um. <laughs> uh, I, I, I personally wouldn't know that, but I mean, he's... A, he, he's been nothing but a class act to us, a good man, and I will confirm another wig. 
Okay, so you, you're obviously gullible and you fall for shit. <laughs> so have you ever accidentally... <laughs> Have you ever <laughs> listen when he when he's down on his knees for me? He's a good man, and I know when I run the fingers through the hair, it just never, never, never caught anything. That's just me. Okay, so since you fall for <laughs> for bullshit, have you have you ever banged banged the chick and she tells you she used to be a dude, and it, when she did, did that stop you or did you keep going? Uh, if she was tight, I kept it going. And would would you listen to Devo while you're banging a tranny? Given the opportunity. I, I, do you guys shoot from the hip with these questions? Yes, or you no, like have I, a bag of them that you got developed no, over the no, years? I, I want to hire you to help write my next song. We have nothing that we go to. There's no. Go-to. Here's a, here's what the chorus should be: Rap, let my tongue roll around your bunghole. <laughs> Eighty days around the world. I, I like it. I like it. Can, can we pen this together? It's a good I'll call hook. my agent. We'll put it into press. No, no problem. <laughs> Oh damn! <laughs> you, you you need to come on every week. You're a lot of fun. Blumpkins I'll, with I'll, Eddie I'll Trunk. Come on whatever you want me to come on. <laughs> Blumpkins with Eddie Trunk. Everything. The whole deal. This is great. I'll bring a healthy supply of Kleenex. <laughs> do you, do you when? <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, let's see. Just a couple more things, and we'll let you get going because we're getting ready to shut down our show here. Um, that, I want to. baby. I just wanted to ask again: How can people get a hold of your music and your website and stuff? Uh, best place for everything Trickster: www.tricksterrocks.com. That's our website. There's tour dates, photos, video. Uh, we got a free Trickster radio playing twenty four seven. There's also uh, tour dates, CDs, DVDs, T-shirts, the whole nine yards, everything right at TricksterRocks.com. That's for everything Trickster for sure. Uh, just a couple more questions here. We'll let you go. I had question in the hey, chat, man. questions in the chat when they're asking, do you still have a restaurant in upstate New York? I know. I used to. Had it for about six years. Once we got the new record deal for the new audio machine thing with mm-hmm. Frontiers EMI, uh, I, I said, you know what? I am done. Uh, I had a nice run. The last year and a half really paid it, I think, took its toll on me. I, I put a lot of myself into it, and I think I really burnt out, to tell you the truth. Uh, actually, not it's funny. I, I mean, I was on the front line doing it every day, and I uh, took a lot of pride in it. But it certainly, I tell you what, dealing with people, very rough. Everybody knows that whole restaurant and oh, it's a tough business, all that crap, but they really don't know why it's tough. The toughest part about it, and you're going to hear it from me first, is that you're trying to do a job uh, of exceeding expectations, but people have unrealistic expectations. And to put yourself on the line every day to make that happen, it just, ugh, even with the best of crews, some of the best people doing it, to exceed expectations on a regular daily basis where people have unrealistic expectations, it's a job that really is a, it's a battle. It's a, it's a losing battle no matter where you are. What kind of restaurant was it? Uh, it was primarily American. We had some things that had some Italian fusion or some uh, Asian fusion to it, but uh, primarily American food. And it was uh, right in the heart of Florida, New York, which is where I met the great Jimmy Stir. And we became good friends, and uh, it was a nice chapter in my life, and uh, I'm glad now it's new audio machine oriented. Cool. What did, um, and what did, were you a chef, or did you just did you run the job? No, you know, it's funny. I was, uh, for, to be a guy in the restaurant business, and I really couldn't cook. <laughs> I guess I could, but I wasn't a great cook. Mm-hmm. I had a professional to really do that. My, uh, I guess my expertise all was more marketing oriented, and I love people. And I love being around people, and uh, when it came to service, I knew how to put service above self. And, uh, again, it was a great time. But uh, food is not everything in a tips? restaurant business, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. Otherwise, you know, McDonald's, they, they, people don't go to McDonald's because the food is so good. I mean, it tastes good, but it ain't good for you. Yeah. So you know, the quality of food is not necessarily the most cornerstone thing when it comes to a restaurant. However, if people keep coming back for it, you're selling a commodity. And I guess if you sell golf balls, the same thing holds true. They like the golf balls, or if at least they think they do. Did you steal tips? From your waiters and waitresses? No, no, but I got a lot of shank. <laughs> <laughs> hi If you want tips, go go be a moil. Do some circumcisions. Otherwise, it's the shank you really want to take care of, my friend. hi You know, I just celebrate. <laughs> Can I get a job there? I'll get, like, be union standby or something like there. that for that gig. We are. Uh, boom We just celebrated. <laughs> we, we celebrated the 40th yeah. anniversary of my bris. On September 22nd. 
<laughs> was it your birthday or your brist day? My brist day. <laughs> I was one week old. You know, and- it's funny. You were one week old. You had it done. And they came I was, after you know, it, more and more hospitals these days. It, it, funny, I, I, I actually got circumcised twice. Believe it or not, I'm not even kidding. First, when the hospital did it as a regular practice for cleanliness or whatever, and then I got adopted into a Jewish family, so I had it done again. So Damn. I'm shorter than normal because I got circumcised twice. My son Brandon. He got circumcised, not because of the Jewish thing, but because that was the like regular uh, job of the hospital. And I'm glad to say he is 100% disease-free, and I love him very much. <laughs> what is it? What is it? All right, well, hey, uh, we're going to have to get going. This has been a hoot. We're, we're running up against Gentlemen, the- I can't thank you enough. God bless Maximum Threshold. TripsToRocks.com thanks you. And when you guys, when we come around, give me a call, man. Please let me know. Uh, you know, we'll put you on the list. And we've got to get down and dirty, have some fun. And, uh, you know, I'll show you what, what, what it's like to really have sex with, with a, a uh, pre-op uh, transsexual. Awesome. <laughs> so how far along are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Can you do us a quick favor? Hit me, baby. Yeah, can you do a promo ID for us? Just say your name, the band you're with. You listen to Maximum Threshold and throw some crazy out at the end of it. You got it, dude. You rolling? Yep. Hey, it's Mark Scott from Trickster hanging out with the boys here. Hey, Maximum Threshold, MaximumThreshold.com. Watch your ass. We're going to bite it off. <laughs> that was perfect. That was buddy. great. Thanks. Yeah, I want to thank you again for being on the show with us and hanging out with us and Anytime you want to be on here, man, you got our number here. Just call in, and we're live every Saturday night from 8 to Don, 11. Dave, I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. You're Dave. Welcome. Dave's not here. It's Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He wrote that. Dave that was Dave. You know, see, you guys got to get shit together now. Well, Dave runs. Dave's the one who talked to you. He runs oh, the. Dave's the guy from last night. Yeah. Okay, got it. He's the guy who blew you He's last night. He's the guy night. I slept with last night. Okay, fine. I mean, as long as you got that straight. <laughs> Okay, man. Have yourself a good one. Take care. Mike, oh, Dominic, I really appreciate it, bro. One, Thank you very much. We'll more, definitely talk to you soon. One more thing. What do you want me to play off off um, new new audio machine? Uh, Dirty Love. That's the way you guys like it, isn't it? Sounds good. Yep. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> There's tax on that, too. That's don't right. forget. Okay, have yourself a good one, man. Take care. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. This is Dirty Love by Trixie. Back after this. Thanks, Mark, for being on the show. Thanks, B.
Thank you for listening to an exclusive interview here on Maximum Threshold Radio at MaximumThreshold.net.